Jimmy. Okay, guys, we'll get ready to start it. I know everybody's excited. We certainly are here at the Astros. Uh, we have a very special host of this program. We're going to introduce a few people here. Uh, afterwards, you have an opportunity to do some questions with, uh, Craig, uh, with Craig, Q and A session. Craig's going to say a few words as well. Uh, unfortunately, we're a little strapped for time. Craig has to catch a flight to New York City. All the Hall of Famers have a big press conference tomorrow morning. But the nice thing is the media in Houston, you guys get a chance to get him before his conference call, which is at 3.45, so you get first dibs at him. But uh, my pleasure right now to introduce our host. Everybody knows him, the voice of the Astros on television for many years, all of Craig's career, Mr. Bill Brown. Thank you, Gene. It is indeed a historic day. Have we ever seen this room this packed before? Uh, that's great. That's great. Welcome to Minute Maid Park. For this special day, 53 years of Astros history, and now we have that special day we've been waiting for. And of course, uh, we thank the fans, uh, all the people throughout the city of Houston who have been loyal and have followed this player and this team for so many years. It's a big moment for everybody in Astros land. Before we introduce our guest of honor, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, we have many special guests here today, and uh, we're glad they are. Uh, Astros owner and chairman Jim Crane is flying in, and hopefully he will be here later on in the press conference. Astros president Reed Ryan is here today. We'll be hearing from Reed a little bit later. Astros general manager Jeff Luno, along with the new skipper A.J. Hinch. Several former Astros players and staff are here with us as well, and two of them managed Craig during his career. And uh, so let's get uh, on with the introductions there. Larry Durker, of course, one of Craig's managers, is here today with us. Jimmy Wynn, the toy cannon right down here in front. Brandon Backey is here. Former Astros president Tal Smith in the back of the room. Enos Cabell is here today. And uh, also a couple of special guests, uh, Barry Axelrod, who's been Craig's representative for many years here. Good to see you again, Barry. And Rita Schuma, formerly with the Astros, now with the Sunshine Kids, is here today. <clears throat> In addition, Astros Hall of Fame broadcaster Milo Hamilton is here today with us. Broken pelvis, and you've recovered very well. Good to see you, Milo. And Astros broadcaster Robert Ford in the back of the room. Good to see you, Robert. Jeff Bagwell, of course, uh, gave it a run again this year, fell a little bit short. Uh, we're hoping to have one of these for Jeff here next year. So, book it. We are disappointed, but uh, hopefully the votes will be there for him, and uh, these things do not always happen as quickly as we want them to. And also, Craig's wonderful family is here with us today. They're right down here in front. Connor, Kevin, Patty, Quinn. It's a happy, happy day for all of you and all of us. <laughs> and, of course, for the extended family, the Sunshine Kids, they've been a big part of uh, this family's life as well. And now Astros President Reed Ryan has a few remarks. Thank you, Bill. Hello, everybody. Um, Craig, Patty, Quinn, Kevin, Connor, congratulations to you guys. Um, this is a very, very exciting day for all of us in the Astros family, uh, especially for me. As you guys know, being the son of a Hall of Famer, I've had a lot of equity in this with you guys. And uh, to know the joy that you guys celebrated in that house this morning when you got that phone call, uh, it's just, it, it touched my heart today, so I'm really, really happy for you guys. Um, on behalf of Jim Crane, our ownership group, many of which are here today, um, all of our employees that toasted you earlier, all of our players, our fans, our front office, and all of our alumni, congratulations on being the first ever Houston Astro elected into Major League Baseball's Hall of Fame. You know, you played the game the right Yes, thank you. Craig, you played the game the right way. You played it with respect. Respect for yourself, respect for this organization, respect for your teammates, and uh, for the city of Houston. And you lived your life with class and dignity, uh, and no better example of what you've done for the Sunshine Kids over the years and still continue to do to this day. So I just wanted to say today you join a group of 300 people the best 300 players ever to play the game of baseball. Think about that for a second. Everybody that's ever played this game and picked up a ball. You're joining a group of men with the names of Ruth, 
Robinson, Mays, Mantle, and now Biggio. Congratulations, my man. Thank, Thank you. you. Now for our guest of honor. Back in 1987, the Astros selected an undersized fleet-footed catcher from Seton Hall University with their first pick in the June draft. Who would have known at that time that this fresh-faced kid would be headed to Cooperstown someday very soon? You're 49. You look like... You Look like you're 29. You need to fess up. You're still fresh faced. I'm looking at some of those salaries. I might want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> in his 20 remarkable seasons in an Astros uniform, he collected several awards, including four gold gloves, seven all star appearances, five silver slugger awards, on his way to reaching 3,060 hits. During his career, the Astros would enjoy their most successful run in franchise history and he was a major reason for that success. He was a gifted player for sure, but what really stood out about him was his grit, determination, his leadership, and just his unmatched drive to play the game. And another attribute that stood out was his unselfishness. When the team asked him to change positions, not once but twice, he did it without complaining. And that is what mattered the most to him, the team. He signed a, a picture for me a few years ago. Uh, it was a poster that some of you may have when he set the record for being hit by a pitch 285 times in his career. And he was standing at home plate surrounded by baseballs, and he signed it, take one for the team. Well, that's what he did 285 times. And uh, that was part of his unselfish approach that makes him, for me, one of the most unique players in the history of baseball with his combination of the way he played the game the way he would do anything to get on base, he would play any position asked of him. That's what he was all about. It's my great pleasure now to introduce the first ever Houston Astros Hall of Fame player, Craig Biggio. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. Um, this, is a, this is a very overwhelming and humbling experience to be up here in front of you all today. Um, I, I have to admit, this morning, uh, you know, last year when we, we came to this date, I woke up in the morning, I was fine, went about my business, and, and hopefully I got a phone call, and then the phone call never came. Well, this morning, it was about 4.30 in the morning I woke up, and I was sick as a dog, nervous as heck, and then all of a sudden I went back to bed at 7, then got up, did a little weight lift, then ran, then I, then I couldn't settle down, I was too antsy, nervous, and excited. Then I went for a walk for a couple miles, then came back through BP to the boys, and then I got a phone call at noontime that will forever change my life, my family's life, but it was, it was very, very overwhelming and very emotional. I don't really remember speaking to the people on the phone, other than I started crying. <laughs> and then I asked them, I think it was the third person I ended up talking to, and I said, is this really real? You're not playing a joke on me or nothing, right? So, but anyway, um, Today is, is, is a great day. You know, there's a lot of familiar faces in here. There's a lot of uh, new faces in here. And being part of the Astro organization for 20 years, uh, or going on 25, 26 years as, as far as being in front of part of the front office, I love this city, I love this town, I love this organization, and, and it's always been about that. I was just an East Coast kid that came to Texas. Uh, John McMullen, Yogi Berra, and Clary Anderson. Clary Anderson was a legendary scout. Uh, in the East Coast, and he was the one that stuck his neck out for me and decided to try and take me in the first round. But Yogi Berra and John McMullen came and watched me work out in, in college during that time. So that was the first opportunity. Um, I'm very grateful for Dr. McMullen and Yogi, and, they're, they're, um, and Yogi's a dear friend. But that's the opportunity that I had to come here, and I'm very grateful for that. With that being said, this has been my town for over close to 30 years in, in this organization, and, and um, I'll tell you, I did everything. Like Brownie said, I, I, I have no regrets in my career. I, I, I played the game hard. I played the game right. Uh, it was always about the team. It was never about I. It was always about winning. It was always about getting to the World Series. And that's the ultimate goal every year. And we were the first Texas team to do that and take a lot of pride in it. Um, you know, I, 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 you, some of you probably heard me say before, you know, yeah, I got paid to play the game that I love to do. And how many people can say that? I mean, I got paid to do what I love to do, and honestly, I very am humbled about that. And I would have done it for free, and I loved every minute of it. And I tried to go out there and play the game as if it was going to be my last game. 
and that's what it all meant to me. And at the end of the day, uh, I'm very happy for today for my family. Today's a great day for us. Uh, it's a great day for the organization, but it's, you, it's a huge day for our fans. And when you play 20 years in a city, it's hard to do. So, sooner or later, the fans are going to get tired of you, and they're going to get tired of seeing you run out there every day. And we had an am amazing relationship. I'm very grateful for that. And I'm very happy to be able to give that back to them today. Today's a special day because of that, because we get to enjoy it as a Houston Astro organization, and we get to enjoy it as a fan base. We finally got a guy in there. And, I mean, it's, uh, like I said, today was, it was a very emotional day, nervous day, and um, I'm very excited and honored and humbled to be able to be the first Astro to ever be in the Hall of Fame. Craig and Patty uh, have a little trip to make to New York, uh, so our time is somewhat limited, but we will take some questions right now. Allison. Congratulations, Craig. Thank you, Allison. I have actually a specific question about when you converted from catcher to second base. And can you just recall um, uh, just working with Makalani and what Yogi's role in that? Because I know that you were very hesitant to, to make that move. Well, I mean, I was a pretty much a catcher growing up my whole life. And then all of a sudden you make the All-Star game in your fourth season and they ask you to go play a new position. You know, I could have been a, had a new job in a couple of years if it didn't work out. There was probably about 95% of the people, experts out there, that said it was never going to work. So I tried to take that motivation that I had, uh, that all these people said that it wasn't going to work, and turn that into it's going to work. Uh, listen, I was very grateful to have a, a, a coach uh, in Macalante who, you know, is like a father figure to me. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for him, it wouldn't have worked. I mean, and literally, it was the hardest thing I ever had to do in professional baseball. All of a sudden, you're a catcher in your comfort zone. And all of a sudden, you're starting to figure that out. And then you have to go out and play a new position that you never played in your life before. It could have been a career ender for me. But it was. And obviously, it, we're, we're sitting here today in a different stance. But, and it, was, but it was because of Matty. And when I won my first gold glove, I gave it to him because that's how happy I was for him because he put the time and the effort in, in the countless hours that we had down there. And Yogi was just, Yogi was a good friend. Yo, let me tell you what about Yogi Berra. Yogi Berra, um, the smartest baseball man I've ever been around, without a doubt. You know, Yogi had a lot of, you know, come to the fork in the road, you take it. But let me tell you what, you don't win as many championships as that guy had. And he would walk by me when I was a young kid and walk by the bench and he'd babble a couple things and I'd go, you know, what the heck is he talking about? And then it would happen the next half inning and the next half inning. So as a younger player, I, I had some people around me that were very instrumental. His father, um, Billy Doran, Buddy Bell. I, I, I had a lot of people as a young player that really set the standard and said, this is the way you're supposed to play the game. I'm very grateful for that. And, but the career switch in the position was, was, be, it was really hard. Hey, Sus. Craig, when, when you see Connor and Quinn and Kevin, how, how did it feel? And Patty, I mean, because they've been there with you. And how did the first time you saw them as a Hall of Famer after that call? Well, this more, I, I'm not going to lie, I was crying. I mean, they got it on film. I mean, I ain't going to lie. I cry all the time now. As, as you get older, this is the way it goes, you know? You're like, you just got invited to a... I never played the game to, to get into the Hall of Fame. You play the game because you loved it, and you play the game because you had a passion and an energy in trying to get to the World Series for a city and an organization. Um, but then when you play the game for 20 years, you, you find yourself knocking at the doorstep. And this morning, it was, uh, it was surreal because... Um, I, like I said, I I was I was emotional this morning, and and you know like it, it's it's a you're one of 300 people, and um, you never played the game for that, but it's quite an honor and very overwhelming and very humbling to be invited into this building. Bob, Craig, in your 20 years here, you obviously had the opportunity to go elsewhere during that 20-year period. How much of a factor were the Sunshine Kids and you're remaining in Houston? Well, the Sunshine Kids are part of my family, and they, they're always going to be part of our family. And, and Rita, Rita's here today uh, representing the Sunshine Kids. And um, I've always said that if I could always help and give back, and, and being part of the Sunshine Kids was something that, that they are my family. And um, we will continue to, to be involved with them as, as long as I'm alive. And um, it was a big part of it. I never really wanted to leave, but as business goes sometimes, you, you, you know, you you, does the organization want you back? Does that not want you back? Uh, and then we were able to work it out, and the right thing happened. And I, I, I'll be honest, Drayton McLean was very loyal. I was very loyal. To be able to make it work for a 20-year period, um, it takes both sides. I had a great agent, 
and um, we were able to uh, keep the dialogue open a lot of times. Uh, but the Sunshine Kids were um, definitely a big part of it. Christy? I know it will be tough with uh, 20 years to think about, but can you reflect on some of your favorite moments as an Astro? I, I got to say, probably my favorite moment was, uh, was getting the World Series for the first time. I mean, for Jeff and I, um, you know, we, like I said, we were just two East Coast kids that came to Texas and just loved to play baseball. And that's all we wanted to do. And our big dream and goal from, from day one was always to get to the World Series. And we were the first Texas team to be able to do that. Obviously, the Rangers were able to do that, follow that up, uh, go back two years in a row. Um, but that was always the goal. And, um, and love every minute of it. David Delotti? Uh, Frank, all the numbers you put up, the 3,000 hits, the doubles, is there one number or, uh, that you're more, most proud of you know, I, it, you know the doubles are are kind of big for being, you know, for right-handed hitter um, that are up there, um, and uh, trying to test an outfielder a little bit. Um, the uh, the hit by pitches and turning into a hundred run scored. Uh, that, that's kind of a big number, but the biggest one to me would be probably the extra base hits and having over a thousand because there's not a lot of guys that, that have that. I think Cal Ripken um, had 3,000 hits and, and over a thousand extra base hits, and I'm the other, the only other middle infielder. But I'm just I was just a little leadoff guy, so I mean to get a thousand extra base hits, uh, I'm proud of that a lot. Matt Thomas, Craig, a little surreal. You're going to be one of the last Hall of Famers going in with one team. And the team's moving around. I think Derek will obviously be the game. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? That there'll be no argument about which cap you're going to win. <laughs> uh, it means a lot, and and you know. The relationship that you have over a 20-year period with the front office and uh, two different owners, and, and Drake McLean and, and John McMullen, um, it means a lot. I mean, I was a very loyal guy, and I think the organization was very loyal in return. But as business happens, sometimes you know you, players move because they, they don't want to move, but it's just part of the business structure that happens. But we were able to make it work here, and um, I'm very grateful for that. And um, and I think that the fans appreciate that also. Yes, sir. Craig, you, when you talk, you often say Jeff and I, and when Jeff talks, he often says Craig and I. You know, on such a special day for you, is there a, a sense of something missing that he hasn't had this day? Um, he, there's no doubt about it. Jeff Bagwell is a Hall of Famer, and uh, hopefully it happens next year or the year after. And, um, you know, he... It's it's kind of funny, you know. We were we've been put together for 14, 15 years, standing side by side together, and and you know we we enjoyed every minute that we played the game. We played the game fun. We played the game the right way. He knew me. I knew him. He knew when to take pitches and when I get in scoring position. And defensively, I mean, he was he was a stud over there. And um, you know, and you think about his career offensively, he's the only uh, first baseman that uh, has had 30, 30 seasons twice. I don't think there's ever been a first baseman to even have one. So, um, yeah, I kind of miss my boy up here right now. But hopefully, um, you know, something positive happens here in the next year or two, hopefully. Thanks. Craig, what do you think of the, uh, the guys you're going in with, a former teammate, yeah. Randy Johnson, with three, uh, three pretty dominant pitchers? Yeah, I mean, it's, again, I think that, uh, it, you know, you, when you look at the, the pitchers the last two years, and, uh, you know, there's five, five pitchers have been going in there. Uh, and obviously the, the Braves were our nemesis for the first couple. They sent us home three times. We sent them home twice. And three of those guys got on the first ballot. Okay, and it says a lot. And so the three guys going in, I'm honored and humbled to be, you know, we had some battles, Pedro, and when he was in Montreal, you know, we had some battles. And, uh, you know, and Randy and, and, and then John Smoltz is, you know, the, what he did, you know, as a starter, then what he did as a, as a reliever. Um, it's really cool to be going out with those guys. They were we, we've had a lot of history together, and uh, uh, I'm I'm honored to be associated with them. Mark, Craig, as you get you together, we'll, we'll, if you think maybe we'll get you that from this point on, you're, the way you're immortal, you'll live forever in Cooperstown. I don't know. Uh, it still hasn't hit me. <laughs> I'm, st you know, I'm still. It's, 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 it's kind of. It's still a little surreal, you know, mentioning that. I, I wrote my name on a baseball H O F 15. I was like, that was weird. You know, <laughs> it's like, wow. I, you know, I can write it now. You know, um, but like I said, I, I, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. I gotta be honest with you. Oh no, no. Somebody asked me to write it. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You might have that request a few more thousand times. Yeah, that's okay. Life. It's a good problem to have. <laughs> These are all good problems.